waiting for two of our speakers. So thank you to all of you for being here today. This focus session is on the role of women in climate action. Which will enable us to look at the AgriFed program, which is co-funded by BNP Paribas. And Mr. Antoine Sia is here with us in our offices. Thank you to Adita Camera to be with us from Dakar to moderate this focus session. Madame C is also here. In terms of technical information, we have live interpretation, so you can click on the globe, the bottom right. So for the interpretation, please can every speaker speak clearly and slowly so that the interpreters can do their job properly. The chat is open as well. You can ask any questions that you have or make any comments. And we will send these back to the speakers at the end of the session. So let's start with a short round table so that everybody can introduce themselves and explain their experience and how they've come to where they are now. I'm going to start with Madame C, then Mr. Sir, then Madame Camara, and then we'll move on with the focus event. So hello, everybody. I'm sorry that Madame Sa won't be able to join us. She's got something unforeseen. I can't manage to reach Madame Dio either, so we'll have to do this without her. Maybe I can talk about their work because I've worked with them before in the REFEN program for AgriFed when I was a consultant at UN Women and I was accompanying women during that project. So my name is Madame Dicouy. I'm a, an agronomist and trainer for women farmers in the use of drones. I'm delighted to be here today with you. Apologies. Could you explain to us your background, what has led you as a woman in the field to carry out this action for the fight against climate change and global warming? I'm delighted to be here for this discussion and as I said, I'm an engineer, an agronomist. I studied agriculture and I specialized in plant production. We set up a corporation which supports farming. It's difficult to separate agriculture and climate and the impact of climate on agriculture. It's not only one of the causes of these deregulations, but we subject to the consequences as well. So we offer solutions to the most vulnerable populations, who are often women who work in agriculture, and which are more than 70% of agricultural workforce. And we offer them resilient solutions to the different problems they face. So we're talking about manual work, for their agricultural work, but also the workload is increasing. So we're looking for technological solutions, but also agronomic techniques and practices which will enable them to lighten their workload. 
And that's what I can tell you now before I go into more detail later on in my presentation. My name is Antoine Sir. I'm head of corporate commitment of BNP Paribas. And our role is to reduce, have a positive impact on the environment and social areas. So we work on transformation to try and introduce ecological criteria and social criteria in all of our work, whether with businesses or for private banking, but it's also what leads us to set up research programs to see how we can fund the economy differently or to fund economic players which aren't funded enough to enable them to do other things than those that they do currently. And as part of this work, we were led to support the AgriFed program put forward by UN Women, which helped led us to work with UN Women for West Africa, uh, play an important part in supporting this program, particularly to support 15,000 women and farmers working in the region of Senegal and have done an incredible job. It's important to highlight that. And we're very proud to be part of those people who support this network of women, which really deserves to be analyzed and supported through its important work. Kimmy. Yes, hello. Thank you very much, Florence. Hello, everybody. For my part, I'm Hadita Kamaha. I'm a specialist in agro, fruit, and sustainable development issues. And I was the initiative of advocacy work in Senegal during the last presidential campaign in 2019. And I'm also the president of the Vecanswelt Foundation set up in 2017 and whose aim is to promote education and agroculture in Senegal, particularly for women and for young people to lead them to have behavior to protect our environment. Today, we have a quite uh, a good result from this. We've had reforesting between around Dakar because as African countries, we produce only 4% of greenhouse gases. We are subject to more of the effects of climate change. So the easiest and most effective way for us to deal with this is reforesting. And in our activities, over 4 million people have, have worked with awareness raising through coordination campaigns, and more than 500 young people and women have followed training and since last year, we've initiated what we call a major campaign of reforesting one woman, one tree, which led to a project this year, to a, a project with green entrepreneurship for the forest. And this is a, a we use a word which means to relieve women. So we're going to set up communal forests throughout Senegal and set up spaces which are dedicated to agroecology. So healthy, sustainable agriculture based on sustainable methods. Today, I can say that we are against the masculinization of this approach. And as eco-feminists, we want to support and help women preserve, protect, and restore and transform our economies in a sustainable way. And it's through this fight with the support of UN Women and the Generation Equality Forum 
we will fight for climate justice in Senegal. So Florence and dear panelists, that's a summary of my background and my commitment to climate action now. Thank you. We were meant to be having this summit in Dakar. And with Hadi, we were planning for some reforesting work on Saturday. The launch of the fifth episode will happen on Saturday in the forest to complement all the other reforesting activities that have happened. We'll be with you in thought anyway. Thank you very much. I'm going to continue. We also have someone among our participants from the WCF. We'd like to hand the floor to this person. So Zinabu, we will be giving the floor to you as well to present what you do and the organization that you work for. Over to you, Zinabu. Thank you to, for being here. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be with you today and to have this opportunity to talk about the important role of women in climate action. Even if it's not very visible, it's not accounted for because it's difficult to get hold of data, but it is a fact that women have a major role to play in climate action. Because I'm not going to repeat this, but it's important to mention the social role of women, which means that they are, they have to live with and next to the environment. So I'm the coordinator of Web Burkina, so Women Environmental Program of Burkina, and we fight against climate change. We also promote gender equality. We work closely with several different stakeholders at a national level and at a, with local authorities so that these issues of climate action are taken into account as well as gender issues, both at national and local level. And as today, we've been talking about local authorities. What we've always done is to raise awareness at a local level among women's organizations, but also local councils so that they can integrate the issue of gender and climate change in their local development plans. Because it's very important. And I spoke earlier about the role of women when we look at the farming sector and the other areas. Even in reproductive activities, women need environmental resources. So it's important that they can take part at a local level in the local development plans and in drawing these up. So that local authorities can take women's specific needs into consideration when they are drawing up these documents. A very practical example. If there's difficulty to find care, most care products are found in nature, but women have to go further and further to find them. And if a woman, if women don't take part in drawing up these local plans, they won't be able to make sure that we include in these plans reforesting and useful reforesting. So including the species that they need, that's just one example amongst very many. And it's that's why it's important that they are included. Women are throughout the value chain of agriculture. And it, this is a sector which is related to the climate and it's important that we can give 
women the means because they need the means to be able to work the means to produce to transform and that's very important and to be able to make these changes they need the resources and the means there are a lot of figures about the issue of adaptation and when we take into account women's poverty and the means that they have to adapt we see that a significant number of means are required i'm very sorry about my connection there so it's very important for us to do that we work or have been over the last few years with over 800 civil society organizations and particularly women's organizations to mobilize and inform about the development and implementation of these local development plans so that the question of women is included so that they can have the means to work and the property issues as well which are taken into account this summit needs to give a specific perspective to the issue of property production means the energy required to transform products there are a certain number of things that women need to be able to move forward because if they have these means they can be empowered they can become independent and no longer have to fight against food security and we can move towards development so that is what i can tell you about what we do it's all about the important role of women in terms of adaptation Okay. We had a question in the chat for Hadi about how participants are chosen for the Ecove project. And then I'll leave you to take over the next part. Can you repeat the question, please? How are the participants selected? for the Vacances Vert project. Okay, at the beginning, it was based on volunteership. Because as a journalist, I was recruited by the national TV channel and I was specialized in environmental and sustainable development issues. I did a report in the field and I realized the degradation of the environment in our field, in our country, whether in the forests or in the coastlines or in other places. And one day I said, I'm going to launch this project of Vacances Vertes, but based on voluntary contributions. And I worked with young youth organizations and student organizations to join me to do volunteer work so that we could do what we could to contribute towards environmental protection in Senegal. At the beginning, this organization was to have clean beaches and clean districts. We worked with students who went from door to door on the beach fronts. And those people working on the beaches as well, just to raise awareness about cleanliness of beaches and our oceans because they are completely infected and if we don't work on this more, particularly in terms of plastic, the consequences of which are very significant. And we also worked on clean markets because, as I've said, markets in Senegal are the dirtiest in the world. So we had to do something to raise awareness in terms of plastic. So we went to see the sellers and the women who come to the market to buy their supplies to talk about the dangers of plastic and this is great because in the past in Senegal we would use baskets it was a very natural resource and it comes from a tree 
And today it's the opposite. We use plastic more. And these baskets were represented a lot in terms of our Senegalese culture and in African culture as well. In terms of clean districts, well, we needed to include our, our environment because we needed to change people's reflexes. And with students and with other local organizations, sporting and cultural organizations, we went from door to door as well to speak to people, to raise awareness as we could, to try and change people's reflexes towards environmental protection. And since 2019, Vacances Vertes is a well-known association and we have more than 100 members now in the organization. Well done. I'm going to continue. Today, we are here to talk about the Aquafed project, but also the role of women in climate action. With the case of this major project funded by BNP Paribas, and the aim of this session is to illustrate how women have a, an important role in climate action and to highlight the impact of these programs and to identify the potential for repl replication of this program. As we don't have our regional director, Madame Ulimata Sarr, who was our first speaker, so we're going to move on to Madame Dicossi to talk to us about the AgriFed project. So hello, Madame C, the floor is yours. Hello. Hello to all the participants who are here. As I said earlier, it's very relevant to look at the position of women in climate change as women are more than 70% of farming workforce and produce more than 80% in developing countries of food resources. So these are figures which are very important. And so it's important to involve this part of the population in this fight to have positive results in terms of climate change. Earlier on, I talked about farming and the link to climate change and the role of women. There are many impacts, but women are the most affected part. In rural areas, as we know, it's women who look after the families and to help families exist. But in terms of climate change, there are dangers or the damages can be the soil degradation, lack of fertility, flooding, drought, and that makes uh, household tasks more difficult in terms of finding water, water for irrigation as well, famine. And women have to walk many kilometers every day. In 25 developing countries, women devote 16 million hours just to go and get water. And if we can take the case in Senegal, we're in 18 hours, sorry, 17 hours a week. Women devote 17 hours a week just getting water. So women become less efficient in their work. And when we're less efficient in our work, we have less income. So poverty affects this category of the population more. And girls then end up helping their mothers going to get water. And they have less time and have less time for school. And so this affects the education of these girls. So with AgriFed program, it's a shame that Madame Locato isn't here, but we've been able to work with UN women to provide solutions, solutions in terms of training so that they can produce resilient farming 
but also the use of new technology to gain time, but also to adapt. So over and beyond these perspectives, there's the aspect of how to choose, how to adapt to this context. When we talk about climate change, we're also talking about the rain cycles which are changing. So how we can play with the crop system to be able to adapt to that. We also have also set up an application which enables women, farmers, to deal with invasions of insects generally. We see with climate change, there are an increasing number of new illnesses and attacks by insects. And with this application, women can do a very early assessment of these illnesses and find solutions to reduce the loss of these crops. We've also launched a program called GRINS to develop green cities. We launched this in Dakar and the idea is to roll this out into other cities in Senegal, but also the whole of West Africa. So it's about urban agriculture and regreening public spaces, whether they're terraces or balconies, so that we can not only enable to have local production, so people don't have to walk a long way to find supplies of food, But these are initiatives which we're trying to set up to enable not only to lighten the load for women, but also to find sustainable solutions for these problems. We've trained 15,000 women on climate issues about the behavior to have, to be able to deal with this, how we can work with the soil, how to manage crops, what different doses to apply of different products to be able to maintain nature, how we can have a climate smart farming. And it, with Kotaja, who's the president of this association, we've worked in 12 different regions in Senegal and we spent a whole year offering training on these issues. so that these women can be resilient to climate change issues. Especially concerning women, as we listen to you with all the beautiful initiatives, we can really have hope for a resilient cultural practice for the future with the AgriFed project. Earlier on, we heard about another participant or speaker who is not here with us. As you know, Madame C, mobilizing women requires a lot of mobilization. We have a large network of women with the president of this network. Could you tell us a little bit more about this large network and what you do on the field since you're working with all of these ladies? This is a network of agricultural women from the north. They're already in agriculture. They are already key players in agriculture. This network groups all of those initiatives and it's a label in this network. Some are specialized in vegetable cultures and other cultures. The, we know that by the Senegal River, we can grow rice. What we want to do 
is to be able to group all of these initiatives and to monitor all these initiatives under a same label and support these women besides technical training in relation to agriculture. They also get training to be able to access the market, how to have competitive prices, products, how to store their products so that their products can reach the larger markets. What's interesting in this network is that it is a network which is the largest women's network in Senegal. And they are really reaching, their voice is being heard now. At the moment with women, we are seeing a real change. And because they have followed some training about new agri-techniques, not just about global warming, but also with COVID, they were able to start practicing on other techniques. Thank you, Madame C. Uh, there is a question for you. Especially for you today. And I can confirm what you have just said. If food sovereignty has become a reality in Senegal, it is thanks to women's leaders. 70% of agricultural workforce in Senegal is women. And in order to meet that challenge, to be able to reach that resource, which is our land, our soil, then we need to be able to develop the right tools, the right technique. I'm gonna ask you another question, therefore, which you can answer easily. This is part of your sector of expertise. How do you support these women on the field as agri-fed? As I said, women's groups, some are from various regions, and they have different realities. These, they have different realities. First of all, we have to do a diagnosis to see which are the real problems, the real issues on the field, what practices are being experienced and what solutions can we bring to get results from there on, from a study case, then we draw a list of things to do in order to improve them, their results, the way, the, the ways of working. And then we organize sessions depending on the needs and the number of participants. Our training module are really on demand. You cannot, for example, you could not train somebody who has gone to school the same way than someone who's never been, who can't read and write, for example. So we make sure that our training sessions are tailored for people. We go to the field. We also plan to train them on new technologies with tutorials, for example, so that they understand what is being said and they can apply it to their field of expertise. We didn't stop there. We are, um, we have a majority of women in our organization, about 20,000 actually. But we also invite, as part of this program, girls and daughters-in-laws and daughters of these women. Some of them had left school early. Either they're at home doing 
high scores or they're not doing anything. So this is a college for girls, young girls who live in the villages. What we have done with these girls is to, to be, become levers, to become a relay for these women in order to train them and to teach them about how to facilitate some events, for example, fairs, so that they could really put forward the work that the women are doing. These young girls, thanks to the AgriFed program, we've also been able to give them some training. And with these trainings, today, These girls can support their moms in their work. And they try to bring new ideas to modernize agriculture and give a new vision of agriculture, modernize the whole from what we can see in your brilliant presentation. We can see that training is a must. Among our key players, dear panelists, our financial backers also are important. The BNP Paribas, the National Bank of Paris, is also resorting to our SDGs and they are really at the heart of some of the agricultural actions. So now I'm going to turn to Mr. Aquasi, who is the who is the person in charge of the company's commitment as part of the BNP Paribas Bank, is a financial partner for AgriFed. My first question, therefore, Mr. Sir, is what would explain the interest to support women's initiatives such as AgriFed, for example? Thank you. It's always fascinating to be able to participate in such discussions, such meetings around this important project, as you mentioned. This is a, a legitimate question, which brings us back to the core of our job as bankers. It should be useful, socially speaking. It should have a raison d'etre and it's helping to put people's money to serve other people's projects. In the last 50 years or so, we have observed that the way the banks were working, and that's true for any banks in the world, the way banks are working seems to have excluded some people that did have projects and that needed some funds especially the, in the case of small farmers in the emerging nations. There are solutions for funding around the microcredit, microfinance, not knowing that microfinance does have some advantages because it helps to bring solutions, but also has some drawbacks. When stakeholders in the agricultural field when they when they change when they try to find new solutions microfinance in its classical form has difficulty to move on we came to realize that another way to have an impact on smaller farmers the way to have an impact what we came to realize was to still support microfinance institutions in the world on, on four continents, Africa, Asia, Latin America, and Europe. There's a lot more microfinance project that we know of. We've been doing this for 31 years. For example, the institutions which we are supporting 
the money that they are lending is the money that we gave. That's about 2.4 million beneficiaries in the world. And out of those 2.4 million, 83% of these 2.4 million are women. Agriculture is carried out mainly by women. And because we are also dealing with clim climate issues, we soon realize that this issue of funding agriculture and climate issues were overlapping. We developed a program, a program, microfinance for finance-based adaptation, which is a microfinance that will offer advantageous conditions to agriculture, agri farmers, I should say women farmers, 95% of women in this program, of people in this program rather, are women. Therefore, we made the link between microfinance and climate action. Of course, when we have people who have a transforming role for agriculture and for climate, we need to be able to get them out of microfinance to start financing them or funding them like we would do with small medium companies. These conditions are actually a lot more advantageous than microfinance and the bank really needs to help those who are bringing transformation. Otherwise people would never meet. Not only we need to go to them, but we need also to help them to make the way to reach the gap between being an isolated small farmer to becoming a small or medium business. If it's always the same people who can access more advantageous funding, then it will be always the same people who will be staying in a less advantageous system. So the whole challenge here is to see how we can reduce that gap. All of a sudden, we realized uh, with the help of those who reminded us of the AgriFed program that it was a wonderful opportunity to see how we could reduce that gap, mainly that Corcardia and the 15,000 women have already done a tremendous work. I've visited their packaging units, plants for rice. It's amazing what they are doing. They have managed to grow rice in places where many people, including men, had given up. And yet they managed to do it. They did a wonderful work over there in that area. It's quite an extraordinary achievement, yet they were not quite ready to reach that gap. So what we have done with AgriFed was to make sure that with all of our means, bank means, credit means, financial competence, all our means, we tried, with all our means, we tried to try to reach our goal. We will come back to this indeed, and that will be my second question. Okay, I'll leave that to you then. Ask your second question. 31 years to serve women, to help women become more autonomous through entrepreneurship, green entrepreneurship, resilient agriculture. It's something to be saluted and noted with the BNP Paribas Bank. Now, which are the means which you are using to help these women in the, in the climate action? Means are 
we're talking here about figures, $1.8 million. It's quite a significant figure. Little by little, the money that was put on the table was also accompanied or backed, if you like, by our more specific bank support. Now, what was the purpose of this money? First of all, to give these women uh, legal support and legal competences and skills. They are working on soils, lands, which in the past were given to men, but now they are the one who have the rights on these pieces of land. So it's important to support them in that respect. The legal aspect, of course, is very important, as well as the bank aspect. Often the legal sector has a relationship with the bank sector. Secondly, we have a technological aspect. We have worked and we made it possible for AgriFed to work with a number of technological partners. We talked about drones. Obviously, someone who has a piece of land and who has to go there when it's 45 degrees temperature, or if the person knows exactly what they're doing in terms of farming, if they have a drone, it's a lot easier if they have to go and uh, to do any kind of work there rather than walking under a temperature of 45 degrees, for example. Also, we have worked on the issue of sales. There are technological means. We, as bankers, we have partners who are, who are potential buyers. What we are doing through technological platform and contacts in order to enable access to market. And the fourth dimension is that we are going to look for them so that they could become customers through their cooperatives, through their businesses to become partners of BNP Paribas. That requires a certain amount of work, of course. They are very far from having the financial structure, the administrative uh, structure of other companies we're working with. So the first project was to help them to do credit campaign with uh, more normal credit conditions or bank conditions in our campaign of 2021, we were able to lend 350 million CF, French CFA. We have to also say about the institution for microfinance that they have a capacity to dive in the conditions of each farmer, women farmer. And that required some support, some help. So we did have some funding to help both with the production and the uh, markets, uh, access to markets. And overall, this whole experience went well. We are drawing lessons from this, of course, so that little by little, we, we want them to become regular customers of BNP Paribas. I was talking to the, the director of BNP Paribas in Senegal. And when we talk with him, Orcadia is probably the one that I would have the more trust in. So how to go from trust that we have in those women in these organizations and knowing for sure that this is a good model to then becoming a company that can borrow money, even though this is not a classic type of company. 
Why? Because these people are really transforming the economy. They are the leaders of tomorrow. If we do not work on this kind of experiment, the world would really miss its destiny and we would have missed our bank destiny and we do not want to do that. Thank you very much for your input. We understand that beside the CSR, we need to have a partnership between the bank, the BNP bank and these women's organizations. I'm going to ask you one last question. Mr. Seal, are you ready today to support other programs in Senegal for climate action? What you need to understand that this is for us curve of experience that will be, uh, I was talking earlier on about BEBA program, which aims or which, which aims at being present in Senegal for microfinance in Senegal. We will do it in a way that will be more climate oriented and more social oriented As I said earlier on, in the world, Senegal is a place where we are very much involved. 2.4 beneficiaries, 83 of these, 83% of these are women out of 2.4 million beneficiaries. So I would just like to remind you of another program we are one of the organizer, One Planet Fellowship, which started as a One Planet Summit. With the Gates Foundation and another foundation in France. And this program aims at training researchers, local researchers, African researchers, and when I'm talking about researchers, I'm saying that 50% of the researchers have to be women. It is a completely gender equal program. These researchers are looking, are searching or researching on a, a aid to climate. This program didn't only existed in the past in English speaking Africa. And because we started, we joined that program, then we said we would support this program if it could be extended to French speaking Africa and mainly to Senegal. Thank you very much, Mr. C, for your presentation. BNP Paribas Bank has some demands in terms of uh, CSR, environmental and societal responsibility with a positive impact. If you would allow me, Laurence, I think we need to move on to the second phase of our session for an interactive discussion with our panelists. Oh, Questions are till open for Mr. C and Mr. Sir. Now the first question. Can we know today what, of, what is the extent of such a program and what perspective for duplication? I will start if you would allow me to. Yes, please go ahead. Talking about the case of Refam. It really helped access to resources. I'm talking about financial resources with the help of BNP Paribas, but also technical resources and knowledge resources, access to information in general. Most of the women's organization are deprived of lack of information, access to information. 
all the information regarding agriculture. I would be very happy to see, for example, today, to see women from the South duplicating what's happened in the North. At the moment, the Northern part is benefiting from this model, but we would like to see it duplicated in the South or other parts of the country, whether it's talking about human capital, building capacity, and opportunities. Mr. Sir was saying it earlier on regarding difficulties of accessing funding. Most of the women are not trained to manage loans or borrowings. We have set up a training session on managing finances. We need to train women to know how to manage a budget, how to manage money so that it would not be a vain investment. I think these are the kind of resources which we need to go further. J'ai l'impression que Kelly a eu euh, un, un problème de connexion. Ah, ah, ouais. On va poser la même question euh, sur les, les, facteurs, les facteurs clés de, de succès et de réplicabilité. Euh. We're talking Alors, here about being able to duplicate some programs to other places. I'm not going to actually talk much about that in terms in terms of agriculture, but for financial projects, what is clear, what makes things replicable is when we have enough experience and enough surface, what is most costly in finances, it is putting together a file. We are spending a lot of time if there is a project, if the borrowers to find out whether or not the borrowers will be able to pay back the credit. The whole purpose of uh, lending money is to make sure that people are able to pay back. If not, then you would not be a good bank because you would put uh, pressure or you would put on their shoulders something that's too heavy for them to carry. Our job, therefore, is to spend a lot of time analyzing, studying the projects to make sure to see there is a possibility. There's always a risk, of course, but if there's a high possibility of being able to pay back. So we need to acquire experience on the type of projects and technology will help us to evaluate the projects even more so. This is something even artificial intelligence can take you very far. What we need to understand is that sustainability in a project can be assessed through satellites Anal anal sorry, analyzes, and it's something that's probably going to happen more so in the future with AI, through photos, through the help of drones, we can understand what people are doing. There is technology that is developing even further, even the fact that you can send a photo through your smartphone. Even that is something that is changing the game and the way we are uh, presenting some file or submitting some files. So there is a whole range of possible transformation, possible, 
after we have understood the types of model that we have and the way that technology and the way we understand things which are changing and what kind of projects we can support in the future, which is why we are supporting projects like AgriFed, for example, because these are very much experimental projects. We are involving or engaging a lot of means because we are seeing a lot of changes coming. And in the long run, this type of projects will be replicable. I agree I with Mr. Agree with the two points you've just made. Firstly, First of all, financial institutions, because it's more reassuring for a bank to lend money to somebody who's already been trained, so how we can manage that. How can we make sure that somebody can be solvable? And in terms of AI, that's something which really is the solution we need. We need to adapt that to reality in rural areas. Most solutions that we see at the moment are imported solutions and it's defaced. So the needs in rural areas, which are different from imported solutions, European reality is not the same as African realities. So we need these digital solutions to be, to reflect rural areas. I was talking to you earlier about an application. So the farmer just has to take their smartphone with the application, just has to take a photograph of the plant and the application carries out an assessment of that, which gives it the name of the illness, the symptoms, the appropriate treatment, either biological treatment or chemical treatment or mechanical treatment. And what's interesting there is that we've integrated a vocal system so the person who doesn't know how to read can hear this. And we've got that in local language, Wallen, or any other language or the most spoken language in West Africa. So it enables farmers to be independent and to be able to take action. In Africa, we know that there are several million of tons of crops which are lost every year because of illnesses and disease, because action wasn't taken in time, because they were waiting for an engineer to come from far, or they're waiting for an advisor who couldn't come because there wasn't enough time or because there wasn't transport or anything else. So these are things that enable people to react straight away and to protect their crops. Thank you very much for your answers. Very enlightening. I will carry on now with Madame Camara. I think she, I'm afraid that she has no electricity in her building, so she won't be with us. So I will take over for now. I think there are some more questions in the chat, which I will go through. One to Madame C and Madame Sikba. What are the main difficulties that you face implementing your activities? So regardless of the level for each problem, because giving training requires pedagogy. So we've had to design modules which are tailored So a module which doesn't require people to be able to read, for example. And that was one of the major challenges that we had. The other point is the availability in terms of time, because not only do these women have to manage their work in the field, but they work at home. So setting aside time to follow training is very hard and a real challenge to make sure these women could follow the training. But these women wanted to learn, wanted to change things, wanted to move things forward. So we found solutions. Another difficulty we faced is that so often we see in the field, there aren't enough materials to be able to 
deal with things on a daily basis, to access to resources is important. And the fact of accumulating different tasks as well is a major challenge for women and often causes a barrier for women. Thank you very much. I don't know whether Madam Sigda is here. Could you turn your microphone on so that you can speak? I'm here. Thank you very much. Did you hear the question? Please, could you repeat it for me? Of course. So what major difficulties do you face implementing your activities? I've already stated difficulty in access to productive resources for women in terms of adapting. And the other issues are more linked with structure and linked to learning. Women, as you know, are part of the majority of people who've lacked initial training and initial education. And in the terms of this question of transition, to agroecology and so on. People need to be able to read and write. But women have very significant local knowledge, which can be used in solutions to climate issues. But to put all that together and facilitate their access to the means they need, they need to have this capacity to be able to borrow money. Even though we carry out advocacy so that they don't have to take on debt to deal with climate change. So we need to have more solutions which are green and which are specific to women which participate in reducing greenhouse gases. So solutions which meet these specific needs of women, which is different from normal loan standards by banks. So there's a whole host of things to do. It's not easy. We are trying to provide information and technical capacity as well as resources in terms of seeds. But it still remains difficult because the need is so great. Women have this expertise because they face these difficulties in the field. Yet we need to build their capacity to help them access the means to produce. Thank you very much. Eddie, I think that you are back with us. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> so it's over to you for the moderation. I'm very sorry. Over to you. So there was one more question in terms of drinking water supply. What other approaches to solutions have you identified to deal with this difficulty? Are there any? Yes. The solutions are often the same. Wells, drilling. This is not always possible everywhere because sometimes the watershed is at a difficult level. And sometimes women have to walk many, many kilometers 
And as I said earlier, the figures speak for themselves. And I think this is a really crucial issue. So if you will allow me, Florence, I have an open question as well. I'm very sorry we had a, a electricity cut out earlier on. And that's why I was absent. But I wanted to know what scale has the AgriFed project been impacted by COVID-19? We're still taking stock of this because COVID is still here. It's not gone away yet, it's not in the past. Absolutely. If we take the case of Senegal in 2020, it started to close. They often led short little workshops in the field. So we built their capacity in these issues and they took this information to their level. But this really had an impact on sharing knowledge. So over and above just the markets, which were closed, it restricted communications and sharing information amongst them. I will also ask the same question to Mr. Sir, who is a banker and who funds these women's organizations and particularly AgriFed. Mr. Sir, could you tell us how far the pandemic has had an impact on funding AgriFed or other projects? Of course, this is an impact as a whole on the financial system and at a global scale. I mean, 400 billion euros have been injected into the global economy during the COVID period. So that's something very significant. But apart from what's already been said, I just wanted to say that in these types of times, the fact of having networks of people and know each other and can help each other that's very useful because for example we offered uh, emergency assistance and it was the case in Senegal but also other countries there were requirements for food uh, which generated by the pandemic so what we did was that we, we directed part of our assistance to purchasing rice, which was then given to families which were in need. And I think what's important is that in today's world, there are people who would never have met who now meet and work together so even during the COVID period, because we are in, we work with different stakeholders, and because we saw these new ways of working coming through, we were able to help these families at a quite a high scale. If you will allow me. In terms of everything that was developed with AgriFed during the pandemic, we enabled us to, in terms of producing and transforming produce, 
so women could have access to a wider market so that they could transform the products, anything to do with crops, gluten-free products, products for children. And this platform I was talking about has really helped to perfect things and has helped women in relation to modernization of the general work system, but particularly to with packaging and to help add visuals to their products. So it's also really helped women. Merci beaucoup, Thank you Madame. very much, Madame Lecoussi. I think that th we'll bring this panel to an end now. Thank you to all the participants, particularly our speakers, to Climate Chance, to BNP Paribas. And my last word would be to say that today that our environment is ill. And if we're talking about an ill environment, it means that humanity is unwell. And it's not the pandemic which will go against this argument. This environmental crisis that we're going through is nothing other than, than this health crisis that we're going through is not other than an environmental crisis. And the solution, as BNP has understood, can only be environmental, but then supported by women. Today, it's time for women to take charge again of all the cardinal values which made the natural equilibrium of the planet. So thank you very much to all of you for your attention. Thank you, Hedy. Goodbye. Thank you to everybody.